Well, and uh, welcome to our session today. Um, I'm Amanda Jeffries, and this is my colleague, Non Scantlebury, and we are uh, from the University of Hertfordshire. I'm based in the School of Computer Science, and Non is based in the Library of Computing Services, which actually is quite an interesting combination after our keynote speaker, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, so we're, we're looking at academic and um, library services combining on uh, a research project, and that's what we want to share with you today. Uh, so we're delighted to be here sharing our recent um, research into our student digital experiences. And can I just at this point say, this session links directly, um, perhaps as a bit of a taster of a university case study uh, of student digital engagement. It's going to link with the GISC presentation of the whole data set um, at 4.30 this afternoon in two, room 2.220. So, if you like, this is, this is what it's like on the ground at one particular university, and then you can see the whole, uh, actually 39,000 students, uh, the results from that later this afternoon. So, over to you, Nod. Okay. Um, well, we're also interested, we're going to do a little poll in a minute to see how many of you um, participated in the tracker project this year that are actually in the room, and if you're not sure, We'd like to know that too. Um, but just to revisit um, the work that why we got involved in this was essentially we started a project, an enterprise-wide project at the university, looking at the digital capability needs of both staff and students. Um, and a, typically, it's quite a complex organization. Um, there are several schools involved. Um, and very much uh, typical of some of the things that we heard about this morning in the keynote in terms of the complexity of the organization. Um, and so it made sense for us to actually work with the GISC because we were obviously aware of the work that they were doing um, around developing a framework uh, of digital capability development. Um, and if, if you don't know much about that, then uh, visit the JISC stand uh, and they'll tell you all about it. Um, and so they've basically started off with this framework. For some frameworks work, for others they don't. We felt that we could work with this and adapt it to our own needs. Um, and we're, uh, we're very keen to actually continue to work with them, particularly around the digital capability development of staff using their discovery tool. Um, but for the first time, we actually got involved in the digital uh, tracker with them this year. Um, for many of us, we know we get a lot of surveys going on for students. Um, so we were sensitive to that fact, uh, but we did get absolute support from our um, PVC for the office for students for this. So having that endorsement at a senior level also was enormously helpful for this. So we were aware that there were lots of digital opportunities for students to get involved. Um, but it's not always coherently delivered in that way, which again was something that we were um, hearing very much about this morning in terms of the context of using this. Um, we were also very much aware that there were assumptions by many, thinking that just because they're young people and they're constantly on phones and various devices, that they had a level of digital expertise, which actually, once we started asking them questions, um, and interviewing them, as well as some of the focus group work we did, that there was obvious gaps, and particularly in terms of how they apply the use of digital to their learning experiences and their confidence in using some of these technologies. So at the moment, where we are is thinking about, well, how do we develop this further? How do we focus on the group? What sorts of development do we need um, around that framework where there are particular gaps and building on strengths as well? So we got involved in the tracker project. And now we're actually going to ask you to take part in an E2 poll um, just to find out how many of you here today um, are aware and know whether your organisations took part in the tracker project this year. Another 
10 seconds or so. Yeah. I think it's a yes, it, no, or not sure. It's be. coming through. <laughs> Closing, poll is closed. Ah. Okay, so interesting split here. And we were particularly interested to um, note the not sure's because, again, typically with um, an organization that we're involved in, um, there's so many staff, so many students, so much diversity of activity going on. It's really difficult to get the messages out there mm -hmm. around why this is important, why you should engage, and what to do as a collective to address this in those contexts. So thank you very much for participating in that. OK. Um, so, for those of you that don't know much about the tracker, um, it was a series of questions really that were canvassing some responses from students around their expectations and their experiences of using digital technology, um, particularly set within their learning contexts. So, um, there were questions that basically came from those four pains. Um, and so we, you know, they, they invited responses into that. It was quite um, tricky to get engagement at the university due to all the different things going on. And some universities had more traction around that than others. But we were, we were very um, encouraged that a lot of canvassing did go on on the ground. We were out and about in the university being very proactive. We were at the refreshers fairs, we had stands. Um, and we did a lot of activity uh, to try and get the target audience to engage with us. And essentially, this is what we did to get that engagement. There was a 400 student population target to take part in the tracker. We got 216 responses, which wasn't too bad. Our target for this very first time at a small sample in the organization were 200, so we did actually exceed that. We had support from the president of the student union as well, so that was absolutely essential. Uh, Amanda and I are basically part of a kind of spearhead <laughs> strand of activity focusing on the students. Um, and so we've got a lot of student involvement in it. Plus, we've also um, got some collaborative activity going for the first time with our careers service too. So again, trying to take a very collegiate, collaborative approach around this. Um, we emailed uh, the target group, basically went out from the president of the student union itself with an embedded link to the tracker. And as I um, previously mentioned, we were out and about doing all sorts of things as well, running um, opportunities for people to come along and actually sign in and take the tracker. Um, and we had a full set of Chromebooks available, so uh, we were able to go out and about in different fora with those Chromebooks so people could actually sit down and just do it there and then. Okay, we also offered an incentive, uh, a prize draw, um, which was supported by the Chief Information Officer as well at the university. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I'm going to hand okay. over. Yes. Well, actually, yes, we we've got another meet activity <laughs> that we want you to do. Yes. <laughs> so um, what we'd like to ask you all here is if you'd participate in building a mood or a, a a wordle. a wordle. I've got Moodle on the brain after seeing the last um, presentation. So if you would please actually take part in building our Wordle around some of the digital activities that you actually use in your modules. There are just some examples up there, but we'd like to hear if you've got any, um, anything at all that you'd like to contribute to that. see lots of typing going on <laughs> from here. So the reason behind this, perhaps we can close the, the poll now, thank you. The reason behind this is that one of the questions in the digital student tracker 
was actually to ask our students what kind of um, digital activities they were doing. Hey, and here we are. Thank you. Actually, it's really hard seeing it from underneath. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it's, it's really interesting to see quizzes coming up so uh, prominently. Yes, that is great. We will capture that. Um, but okay. the, the uh, interesting thing is what our students said. So, should we go to this? So, what, which digital tools do students find useful for learning? And um, basically, this was, uh, we just captured the data here. Um, so, they didn't know that we were going to use it as Wordle. It's not particularly well um, edited. We've just taken their words. YouTube, interesting. Canvas is our new uh, MLE from this year. Uh, we also use StudyNet. So, our first year students who were actually the majority uh, of the students participating uh, would have said Canvas and StudyNet, which appears just above YouTube, is actually the VLE that the second, final, and master's students would be familiar with. Okay, so that was one of the interesting questions that the students were asked, and that gave us lots of new information. Um, and we're just going to um, work through some of the questions that we asked. We just picked out some which we found particularly interesting. So uh, we're looking at you know, the student reaction to when digital technologies are used on their course. Um, and do they understand things better? Yes, over 72% agreed. Um, and very few disagreed with that. I enjoy learning more. Isn't that, uh, it's just so encouraging for us. For those of us who have been plugging away, either as academics or as uh, professional staff, um, I enjoy learning more. Um, and then this I issue of being more independent in my learning. Um, a lot has been written about this in the research. Do we just make students more dependent? Um, but actually, the students here are saying, that's nearly 78% saying, I'm more independent in my learning when digital technologies are used on my course. I feel more connected with my lecturers. Uh, I think we would have liked to have seen that pushed up a bit, but still, that connection, again, um, the challenge in a previous question was whether the students stop coming to lectures. Well, actually, using digital technologies implies they feel more connected. Um, Digital skills are important in my career. Uh, so there's a lot of emphasis on using um, their, their course as, uh, towards employability. Uh, we were encouraged at the perception by students that digital skills are going to be important. Um, but does their course prepare them for the digital workforce? Uh, we would have liked to have seen this a little bit higher, obviously. Uh, it's just under 50%. Uh, that's mitigated by the fact that the majority, over 30% of the participants were from our first year. And typically we don't emphasise the employability of, of the courses in their first year unless it's something vocational like, like nursing. Um, so that message we have taken back to uh, help us uh, for the future in our planning and our learning design. So. Um, Drawing in some consequences and some conclusions, um, we are encouraged that this actually shows from this relatively small sample that students are keen to engage digitally with their learning. These are things that we're taking back to our, to our staff. We promoted it at the Learning and Teaching Conference uh, back in June. Um, they, this perception that online they learn better and more independently is encouraging. Um, and the benefit of digital skills for future employment. I think that message is loud and clear. And this connection with their lecturers. Um, it, we feel this is something we can build on and uh, I hope others will be encouraged as well. Um, how we develop this as part of the strategy is what we're asking ourselves now. Um, and we've got ideas. And that's very much something that NON is taking forward in the, in the next year. And at the same time, we're encouraging staff to update their skills to support student learning. You may have remembered from our own Wordle of the student feedback about Linda. Linda.com, we have subscribed to that as a university, and uh, it's one of uh, the areas that, Nin, that Non has been putting forward. So, uh, sorry, I missed that last one. Okay. Whoop. 
developing our digital capability strategy for our students. I'm just going to, I forgot this one was there, sorry. <laughs> and that's it. We would ask you for your takeaway just to acknowledge all those who've helped us. Thank you very much. Board. You can actually read them from the tablet as well. Oh. I made this mistake too. <laughs> ah, right. Um, start at the bottom if you want. Which simple to introduce must haves uh, would you advise academics to begin experimenting with? Any ideas? Oh. <laughs> um, it depends where you're starting from. Um, I think it's looking to see what you've got in your, in your MLE, what support, what tools, um, and actually engaging with your staff to see where they feel they uh, are lacking in digital tools, digital capabilities. But when you get feedback from students, the feedback from the students would like more uh, digital engagement. I think I've been, having been involved in re researching this area for over 10 years, it's very much there's a push from the students to, um, to have more choices and more available uh, in a variety of uh, online environments. Um, one thing as well that's been absolutely key um, that the Learning and Teaching Innovation Centre have been spearheading um, is the guided learner journey. So again, this is the whole idea of actually building the learning experience first um, rather than focusing too much on the tools. But again, the tools are an essential component of the course delivery. Um, and I think we're probably fair to say it's a bit of a mixed economy. We've got some brilliant case studies of where it's been actually delivered really well. And we've got some other cases very similar to what Tracy was saying this morning, um, where people have just been using Canvas more as a kind of document repository and moving, um, transitioning their content that way. So it's a, it's a journey that we're all on. The other thing is Office 365 is seen as a key component. It's something that we offer free now to staff and students to be able to download onto their own devices. So we're just about to launch a program of blended learning events. So we're going to have a mix of face-to-face -face, um, delivery through the library link-up program, um, which we're just launching this semester. Um, and there's also going to be some uh, playlists developed as well within Linda that we're going to share with uh, the whole enterprise. Yeah. yeah, and I think our philosophy generally has been both face-to-face -face and online, both blend, you know, the blend of, uh, it's not one or the other, but it's, it's working out as academics what works for your students. Um, the question there, how did staff respond to the results? Um, well, I mean, as you can understand, we, we are early adopters, uh, we're the, some of the enthusiasts, but we are building that enthusiasm within the different schools, and each school has got uh, their Canvas supporters and a network of colleagues who are supporting uh, the academics, and there's, as we said, a huge um, development of the support for students so that people don't feel left behind. Um, Just a final comment, maybe? Yes. Uh, yes, yeah, somebody picks up that it's interesting that students see Google as, yeah. a <laughs> as a digital tool, but don't mention library, catalog, e-books, e-journals, etc. There was a separate question on e-books, mm. uh, which were quite well used. I can't remember the, the facts. So. Well, the, the key thing as well, I think, that, and that's going to be one of the essential things we're going to deliver through the link of program, is not just simply how people find and engage with ebooks, but it is the actual note taking again, which follows on from the previous presentation. Um, and these are very, um, you know, key digital challenges because we don't have standard platforms. So if you, you know, some publishers will link you into their platform and won't let you take your notes anywhere else. Um, and then you've got other tools um, like Bluefire, Reader, for example, those kinds of things. Uh, which will allow you to keep notes from all sorts of different places in one place. So knowing the right tool for the right job um, and working through all the constraints that we still find ourselves in. We have, you know, we're still transitioning to this new world. Um, but one thing's for sure, doing it together 
doing it collegially and collaboratively is essential if you're going to build that engagement and get people involved and involve students all along the way. Yeah. Okay. Great. It's a fantastic okay. message to finish. Thank, Thank you very you. much indeed. Thank you. Well, thanks to all our speakers. Um, so we have an hour's break now. There is uh, lunch down in the exhibition area and sessions start at 1.30. I'm John Wilson, I'm the CEO at Agenta. We're a technology company that focuses on education and learning. We build, manage and operate platforms for education, for video collaboration. Externally, we prefer to work with what we feel as ethical industries. Um, obviously, education, teaching, learning, healthcare. We feel that we can really contribute to these industries by creating exciting platforms, um, easy to use platforms, secure platforms that people can utilise. What we feel is one of the most important things for Scotland to boost economic growth uh, is investing in rural areas. By investing in uh, broadband in these local areas we can attract more talent, we can attract more companies and we can drastically improve the delivery of education and learning within these schools within disparate regions within Scotland.
I'm John Wilson, I'm the CEO at Agenta. We're a technology company that focuses on education and learning. We build, manage and operate platforms for education, for video collaboration. Externally, we prefer to work with what we feel as ethical industries. Um, obviously education, teaching, learning, healthcare. We feel that we can really contribute to these industries by creating exciting platforms, um, easy to use platforms, secure platforms that people can utilise. What we feel is one of the most important things for Scotland to boost economic growth uh, is investing in rural areas. By investing in uh, broadband in these local areas we can attract more talent, we can attract more companies and we can drastically improve the delivery of education and learning within these schools within disparate regions within Scotland.